I guess boss run here. And today let's talk about how to progress my CA Poison Ballista. But before I do that, I want to put a little disclaimer here because a lot of people have watched my CA guide. A lot of people are really overhyped. I just want to put you a little bit down to earth. This is not really a tested build. Like for example, EA Ballista, I already said that in the last video as a disclaimer. So I hope maybe this time you watch it. This is very, very experimental. If all you care about is getting through the campaign, getting to other builds, right? Then just play something like EA Ballista, play something another content creator has already tested throughout the last few leaks, uh, right? This is very, very experimental. I want to be the hipster guy. Um, so we're going to see what happens. There's some uniques in here. So there's definitely risk involved. I'm just saying this basically as much as you trust me or whatever. Um, if you're picking this build, you know what you're into. I guess the only saving grace of this is if the build would go wrong, you can still go poisonous concoction pretty damn easily. Maybe respec into something like a shield crush poison. You do have quite a bit of options as a trickster. But before we start out, I'm going to shoehorn in something that I actually forgot to cover in the video that I should have. Um, and that is basically how to color your covenant because it does need five off colors and it needs 134 in. The first thing you can do is just use efficacy instead of void manipulation. You lose a little bit of damage, but it is what it is. It still gives you 24% more damage over time. If you take it here, you can see that's still pretty damn fine. And you just cut void manipulation and you have a blue socket in there. Number two, if harvest recolors still exist, that is a really, really easy fix. You can do non-green to green, for example. And uh, that way it's going to be basically done in no time. If they don't exist anymore, well, then for example, you can do stuff like tainted chromatic orbs. People might be corrupting uh, covenants anyways because of tainted orb refusings. We don't know how it's rebalanced yet, but that is uh, also a good use. Uh, and then also if you find a Richie in betrayal, you can get white sockets on top uh, to basically fix the off colors. What I'm going to cover in this video is what you do until you get snake bite, what you do until you get covenant and dark scorn, what these items mean for your path passive tree, what they mean for the skills you want, what they mean for the mods you want. And I'll also give you some tips and tricks at the end. Now, the first piece of progression is going to be snake bite. These are incredibly easy to get because they actually drop from a very common unique strong box that is kind of poison themed. But since we don't know what's going to happen to uniques, I thought it was still worth uh, pointing out. I also have a before snake bite POB down here. Uh, now, number one thing that you have to realize is that our POB is built upon snake bites being in there because it also gives us 60% chance to poison while maximum frenzy charges. If you don't have that, you have to get that elsewhere. So, for example, what's going to happen is you're going to have to cut vitality and war banner for Herald of Agony, which gives you 20% chance to poison. Uh, you will also want this this side here. So, this chance to poison actually counts for your bow attacks as well. So, that's really good to know. So, um, in the end game POB, we path for here because then we have already 100%. We get poison duration here. But before that, you need this. We're also taking this note right here. So yeah, being at 100% chance to poison, really important. I'm also going to repeat that in the tips and tricks at the end. Uh, number two, what happens once you have snake bites is frenzy charges are now worth stacking. What I mean by that is stuff like this here is something you do later, right? Uh, stuff like this whole cluster you do later. It's in the end game POB right here, as you can see. But before that, there's no real reason. And last but not least, have your Uber Lab by now. Your Uber Lab is incredibly important. You get the charge duration, which is going to counteract the downside of snake bites. It's going to be huge. Otherwise, uh, your frenzies are not going to be up for very long. 10% reduced frenzy charge duration per frenzy charge. That's going to be a little bit iffy, right? You definitely want that. And you also get the plus two maximum frenzy charges for a huge power spike. Next up, the biggest thing in this build, if you haven't seen already, the difference between having a covenant and not having a covenant is quite absurd. So covenant is the biggest power spike this build has to offer. Uh, let's look at what this means for the build. So after you got your covenant, stuff like flat damage becomes less important. As you can see right here in the early game, I've made very sure that there's a chaos damage flat roll on every bit of ring. Uh, that's basically because in endgame you don't really need that anymore because you get so much flat damage from Covenant already that you have huge diminishing returns. But in the early game, this is incredibly important. These stats are going to carry you until then. So definitely look out for that, especially when you have a really bad bow at the start. Uh, number two, added chaos damage support becomes weak. Once again, same reason. We have a lot of flat damage already. You'd rather have multipliers than even more added damage. Attack speed also matters more on your bow. And that's basically because the flat damage you get from Covenant gets multiplied by your attack speed. So if you have more attack speed, the uh, flat damage that you get is worth more. And I guess just to note, your mana cost will go up a little because this is a support gem. 
uh, that you are adding as basically your seventh link. And then number three, Dark Scorn. There's not that much to say here, uh, but Dark Scorn does have this line here where it says 25% of physical damage from hits taken as chaos damage. Now this can be a good thing or a bad thing because as you can see here in the early game POB, I have almost no chaos res and that would be pretty bad, right? I would actually take more physical damage if I took it as chaos. But in the end game version, I really try to go for chaos res and that means I basically take less physical damage, which kind of lets us get away with not running determination later, uh, which is huge. Now, one thing I can say is it's not that easy to itemize into chaos resistance. I'm aware of that. But once you have money for a dark scorn, which should be expensive, a lot of people are kind of looking out for poison builds this league. But if you can't, for some reason, there is always one with evil here. Uh, you can get two times 11, 23, that's 45%. And then you can even take this for another 7%. And it, you might also be able to like fix your resistances with this. Now, Pierce is usually a no brainer on Caustic So why am I saying this cautiously? It's basically because the way a Ballista's target, they target the enemy directly and they target the nearest enemy. And the thing is Caustic Arrow ends wherever you target. So if you're self-cast, sure, you can uh, target at the end of the screen and it's going to pierce through enemies, but ballistas are not really going to do that. It can still help, for example, if ballistas are targeting something and in the meanwhile, for example, in Delirium, a small mob walks in front of it, then it's going to pierce through that. So it's still going to be nice, but I wouldn't like, I wouldn't die for it. I wouldn't like pay too much currency for it. Then always check your accuracy and chance to poison. That's really, really important, especially before snake bite, because snake bite gives you accuracy and a chance to poison. So you might get uh, lazy here and just look at your POB and not look in game. It is really important to check, especially your chance to poison. And once you have snake bite, don't threat. You only need 40% chance to poison and hide out because you're going to get the other 60% once you're at full frenzy charges, which with frenzy, and Frenzy on Kill is incredibly easy. Then we have added Chaos Damage is really huge before Covenant. I'm not only talking about the Support Gem, I'm mostly talking about on gear. Um, support Gem, you always have better options, right? It's fine. Um, but here, like these rolls just make so much difference. If you have this roll times three, you, it's like having a seventh link. It is really, really noticeable. And the worse your bow is, the better these mods get. And before Covenant, you don't have a massive amount uh, of chaos damage at your dis disposal. And at the end here, incredibly important, don't go too hard for Dark Scorn. I'll show you something. People are overhyping this bow every single league. It has been in some controversial uh, stuff. But what I can show you here is these bows here are actually not that much worse. Now you might say, well, they are kind of worse, but are they really? We're talking about 20% less damage. Sure, that is a thing, but would you want to pay, I don't know, like five divines for this when you could go for Covenant, when you could upgrade your gear? Um, Dark Scorn is definitely something you want once you have the currency for it. But if, for example, this build, and I think Tuna is also playing Scourge Arrow, right? Maybe more people play that. Um, if this goes meta, I, this would not be on my top priority list. Uh, however, Covenant definitely is up there. And this is definitely something you always want to buy before Dark Scorn. At the end of the day, though, whatever you end up playing at League Start, I hope you have a good one. If you wanted to play Poisonous Concoction or Sea Ballista, I hope I could give you some insight on it. And uh, yeah, see you at League Start. But that's it for the video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, subscribe. As always, a huge shout out to my Twitch subscribers and my Patreons. I couldn't do videos like this without you. Thank you so much for the support. And yeah. We already tested Poisonous Concoction a little bit on stream. It seems incredibly nice to play. So we're going to see how it goes. Uh, anyways, if the build turns out to be like mediocre, we're just going to go poison this concoction for longer until we get some gear. Um, but yeah, um, since I still don't have a slogan, see you next time.